last name is actually Talut, but when my mom came here, uh, they spelled it wrong. So they from T A L O U T E. They got T A L O U I S, and uh, you know, it happens to a lot of people that come from other countries. But the difference is, my mom came in nineteen eighty one. They had computers. I don't, know <laughs> I don't know why they fucked that up. <laughs> Because this is the United States of America where they need spell check at every time period, no matter what. Yeah. Guys, you just heard the voice of our guest. Uh, he just kind of, he introduced himself half. Uh, oh, so this is half Sessions of Mary Jane. I'm Brendan O'Brien. And I'm Rena Ezra. And uh, Stan, thank you for being on the no, podcast with us, man. Thanks for having me. This, yeah. is, this is dope, man. This is cool. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a big smoker. Mm-hmm. I actually, uh, I thought, I, I started doing a bit recently about how I do enjoy getting high, but I like edibles instead. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, that's it. Because I'm really just a fat boy down, deep down under uh, all this loose skin and hoodies. But <laughs> not like it's fun. I, I've gotten too high sometimes um, on edibles. So I got to, it's like, I, I want to take it. I want to mm. use edibles because they're delicious. Mm-hmm. And smoking makes me cough, which I'll probably hit that mm-hmm. some more. But, mm-hmm. um, there's, a, there's like that happy medium. I don't want to yeah. talk, but I also want to get high. But yeah. edibles do can pack a punch. Yeah, yes, yeah. that is the trade yeah. off. Yeah, I once, uh, I once got a cookie from a friend of mine, and like he did, he was like, yeah, it's gonna kick in like an hour and a half. I'm like, okay, and then I forgot, and then my cousin <laughs> came and picked me up, and she was like, let's go to the beach, and it was like nine o'clock at night, and I was like, let's let's do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> And, and then we got to like the boardwalk mm. in like Long Island and like Long Beach and like I looked over the edge of the boardwalk and I was like, all right, so if I jumped over here, would I die? Oh <laughs> and she's like, stop. And I'm like, no, no, no. But like seriously, if I die, if would I would I die? And she's like, no. You probably you probably break your legs. And I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's uh, like certain. There's always there's always dumb shit like that that I'm doing. Like the, in the bit where. Um, uh, I don't even remember what's what's the bit again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eating when you how you uh, take edibles. Oh yeah, when you're taking, so yeah, yeah. I, I prefer edibles and like the bit is basically I just it came up because it happened. I um so I I I'll, I'll be like, hey, you ever get so high you would Uber eat from inside the restaurant? Because um, <laughs> <laughs> one night, one night, in my one. my old neighborhood, I um oh my I was. God. I used to live near a Domino's, and I was like real close. <laughs> and I walked over one day, and I'm sitting in there, and I ordered on my phone. And then I was like, oh shit, I ordered delivery. And I walked back home. <laughs> <laughs> So that's basically, that's what, that's what, that's that's what such actually a classic, happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's actually so, happened. Yeah. <laughs> but then in the bit, like, I kind of go forward with it when the guy shows up, he recognizes me, he's like, hey, weren't you just a Domino's? I'm like, no, nah, we don't all look, we don't all look alike, and I slammed it on his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That, yeah. that guy went home that day. Very <laughs> <Like, laughs> confused. He's but, like, I feel woke now. <laughs> it's, it is, it's, the funny thing is, is like, that, that that happened, I went to Domino's, I got high, the guy did look at me funny, mm-hmm. but he, he didn't say anything, but like, I was like, I wonder what he was thinking. Wait a minute! Did you get the food? I and did. Is there, oh, okay, I good. Did. I, I want to make sure that the happened. He came and he looked at me and like he was just like whatever. And like I, I, I think in his head he was like, I've definitely seen this guy in the last. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, right. yeah, like, I'm, I'm, how how are you with the munchies? Uh, I'm bougie. Like when I get the munchies, mm-hmm. depending on where I'm at. If I'm at home, like whatever. But um, like when, there was a time I got high. Wait, food. you just shit on your own home. Huh? Your home's not bougie? Wait, nah, you know, I, I have like <laughs> regular saying. snacks. So it's true. Yeah, yeah, I got but like if I'm out, like I'll get like I remember I was I passed by like a Paris baguette and I was like, I need it. Whoa. I need Paris baguette right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh but like I'm I'll I look for like like um yeah, I'll go to like Obon Pan if I can, like if I'm mm. out. But like if I'm home, uh this is whatever. Um, yeah, there's something about being, within reach. being yeah. out and being high and having the munchies makes you like yeah. feel like I should treat myself. Right. Why yes. not? Yeah. Like yeah. I am so hungry right now that I yeah. need to give my stomach something that is worthy of yes. the stomach. Right. Yeah. I I went to, I one day when I did go to a Paris baguette one time and they had this the sandwich and I was like. I, I don't know what Asiago is, but I, I yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what better time than now? 
Yes. Those touch screens that they have at like places like Quick Check and other places where it's like the build your own sandwich yeah. thing, those are made for high people because yeah. they're like, yeah. it's like, do you want all of these things? Just push the button of all <laughs> of the topping you want. Yeah. And, the, and then you see the person making the sandwich and they're like, you want oregano, you want asiago, you want garlic aioli yeah. mayo, you want sriracha, you want sriracha mayo. And it all and works together. Yeah. It all goes together. Yeah. That's the thing I do, uh, I do wish we had in New York is, is a Quick Check. I haven't, oh, there's none in New York. Yeah. Um, oh, that's I've true. Never, I've never been, I haven't been to a quick check. So I used to work. Uh, I used to work. I think I didn't say it. I don't work there anymore. I used to work for CBS and uh, doing like street team stuff. And like mm-hmm. they would send us into Jersey to like, you know, for like giveaways. We'd give away like lottery tickets or whatever. And like they'd take pictures with the radio station sticker and mm-hmm. things like that. And we, we you know, we, we were always in Jersey. And I, I, when I discovered quick check and Wawa, I was like, yo. <laughs> Why? Why don't we have these? Yo, yes. That's that's a question. Why is? Do you know it? I have no idea. Mm. Because there's. I mean, I guess this is real estate. Maybe the like having a big enough because they're usually like restaurants. They use you need space. They're usually yeah. larger convenience store, market store, build. You know, like gas stations too. They're gas and stations, they're, yeah. they're joined with that exactly. Maybe it is because it's a combination deal. I can think of a few places I could put a Wawa or or a Quick Check. Like definitely on like the West Side. Like there's nothing around there. I know, like, but like the West Side Yards, you could put one there. You can put one down. Yes. I mean, Hudson Yards is all built now, but you mm-hmm. could have put one there. Let's uh, go to the mayor. Bring your schematics. Well, <laughs> <Let's laughs> the mayor's a piece of shit. You know? <laughs> De Blasio is an asshole. Oh yes. Yeah. Wait. So we're we're gonna get we're, we'll get into Mayor De Blasio in uh, just a second. But uh, Sam, before we continue <laughs> with the yeah. podcast. Uh, we have, uh, as part of the Sessions of Mary Jane, we will have a challenge for you to okay. do where we will give you a list and you have to name as many items on that list as you possibly can. Got it. You say them whenever you want. If we're in the middle of a conversation, you jump right in and you say the thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Uh, if we haven't been talked about it for hours if or days or years, no, uh, during this podcast is when it will happen. Anyway, um, your challenge is to name as many comedy venues as you can and that is place any place where comedy has been housed nationwide do you Nation, mean anywhere specifically stand-up comedy uh, do you mean any I'll say, com- I'll, I'll say just comedy yeah like improv okay. comedy yeah. Like, okay yes. well, I could do that yes yes and so and you, how many do I have to name as many as, as you many can. as you want we have oh, a right. range guests have gone from zero to 92 okay yeah. There's no winner loser. Who's keeping track? How do I? Oh, we are. Oh, our production <laughs> assistant. Yes. Our PA. Uh, so, should, I, should I start at any point? Or uh, yeah, whatever. It's well, well, there's the Comedy Cellar. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're going just New York, there's a Comedy Cellar, there's a Stand, there's New York Comedy Club, there's Eastfield Comedy Club, uh, there's... Um, uh, I'm just thinking about Comedy Clubs. Greenwich Village Comedy Club, there's the Grizzly Pear... Uh, do you have any shows coming up? Uh, right yeah. now? Uh, what do, let me see. This week, I've got I've got two shows in the story this week. I've got uh, there's a place uh, Thursday. I'm at uh, Eats and Drinks in Astoria, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the name. And then the at the 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I'm at QED. That's another one in Astoria. Uh, QED is pretty, pretty dope. Um, I'm doing an improvised tarot show hosted by Brittany Brave. Nice. She's dope. Uh, she actually has jersey ties as well. Um, but she's back and forth between here and Miami. Uh, and then Friday, actually this Friday, usually I would be at the Tiny Cupboard in Brooklyn. Um, but um, uh, there's going to be an all-female show uh, Brittany, hosted by Brittany Brave. Uh, so... Uh, the following week. every uh, usually I'm 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 at, I'm at the tiny cupboard. Um, I think I, the thing that's I've I've got uh, I'm at Comic Strip Live next Wednesday. Um, wow, a lot of great stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah. And we are putting your handle, all your information, people. You can find it in the description of this podcast, which will be available uh, right now because you're listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, what for you makes a comedy venue a good one? Uh, management, mm-hmm. management, mm-hmm. management is dope. Uh, I think um, one of the big things that um, a lot of not just producers but comedy managers, comedy club managers don't realize is like I mean without the talent you have you don't have much so mm-hmm. um I will say one of my favorite places to perform one of my few favorite people in comedy is uh Emilio Savone uh the owner of uh, New York Comedy Club mm-hmm. because to me like they run their club 
of the, at least with the talent, um, it, they give everybody a fair shot. They give you know they have a, it's almost like a farm system. Mm -hmm. You know they have you know, you know the audition process. You know um, you audition if you do well enough, you get you get check spots. If, you know or you can get a guest spot, things like that. And they give you the opportunity to kind of grow with the club and, and, and get better. Because I've personally seen from the point I've been doing comedy eleven years now, and at New York Comedy Club, I've seen people start there and do open mics. You know, do late night, get put into the regular rotation, and you see them get funnier and funnier and get in and get better. And I think if you give comics the opportunity to get better, they will, and that's only going to make your club better. So, mm -hmm. um, I think Very management has been, um, you know, investing in the club. I think like the stand is also a great place I, I like going to because uh, it's hands down the best food of any comic mm -hmm. in. In New York, I can't speak for anywhere else, but as far as like that's the food there is amazing. The drinks there are amazing. It's a really nice spot. So mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's in a great location. Even like with the outdoor stuff, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they knock it out the park, man. They, they do a great job. The food's a good point too, because like I feel like that's not like necessarily the first thing you think of. I think like a lot of times people are like, oh yeah, like they're gonna go there and drink, but it's like if you have good food. That's an extra add incentive to like want to enjoy the show, enjoy what you're yeah. watching, and also just like want to come back there because they get, yeah, if yeah. food's good, then why wouldn't you want to like eat good food while watching good comedy? Yeah, I've been to the, their brunch shows and like. The Brunch is really good. I've been like their dinner's really good. The, the pizza they make like, like it's it, they they put a lot of effort into into the entire experience because you know I'm not saying that you need that but like you know it's 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 good to have a full experience because like mm -hmm. I, I know people that have come to see me friends of mine that aren't comedians you know they come to a show and they're like ah I'm here I got to spend twelve dollars on a beer and like these nachos aren't great and blah blah I'm just like I don't know what to tell you I mean. I mean, just I'm just here to tell jokes. Yeah. yeah. No, I, you know, but I get it. I, you know, but like from a from a comic perspective, I think I think, um, you know, talent is like the the places that 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 provide the space for 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 talent to not just be good but to get better. Yeah. Um, you know, like whenever someone who you know never hasn't been to a comedy club yet asks me where to go, I'll be like, all right, go to the stand if you want a good show. And good food. Go to the cellar if you want like the best bang for your buck. Yeah. Um, you know, go to New York Comedy Club because there's a lot of people that you might not necessarily know that are great. Like I can rattle off a list of names that are regulars that are you know New York Comedy Club that are just amazing, amazing comics like Andre Thompson, Ego Wade, Brandon Sagalow, like guys like Nico White. I'm talking about like no doubt heavy hitters and like mm -hmm. you know a, a lot of those guys. I shouldn't say guys. I should say a lot of those, you know, comics like male, female, whatever. Like there, there's a lot of that 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 talent got cultivated in some in a lot of these clubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you get started doing stand up? Uh, I so I was in college and I always talked about it. I've I've been a fan of stand up forever. Um, Who did you watch? Uh, Pryor, Murphy, Carlin, you know, like my dad would like, Best. he would record them on <laughs> HBO whenever they did like a free weekend and he'd be like, all right, so, and then we'd have them on VHS. So like, I grew up watching tapes that my dad had, uh, like Pryor and Murphy. And then, um, and when I, when I got in, when I started, like, I, I was always a big Saturday Night Live fan. Mm -hmm. I was always like, like, I'm, I'm the biggest Saturday Night Live fan you'll, you'll meet. Like I'm a nerd about it. Mm. I read all the books. Yeah, what uh, did you think about Kim's episode? I thought it was great. I thought it was very good. Yes. Uh, yes. Her monologue was was cutting. Yes. It was yeah. it, it was it was the fact that you know she was willing to to go up there and like say the things she said. Yes. Yeah. I I love that. If you're game, if you're willing, like obviously we know that she didn't write it, mm -hmm. but she was willing to read all the right. those jokes. But also, like, her family was in on yeah, it. Like, yeah. everybody was at, like, yeah. Chris she Jenner was, just, was there. Like, yeah. You know, was it Chloe? I don't know the Kardashians. Like I that. think the only one was the, yeah, I, it was everybody, it was Chloe and Kim and their mom. Everybody mm -hmm. but uh, Kendall. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Kate. No, no, and, and Courtney, you're right. The two younger <laughs> ones and, yeah, sorry. Um, but anyway, the only one I could think of is that, like, when she said a comment about, um, Kanye West. 
in yeah. her monologue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still, I, I don't know. I thought from start to finish, it was a solid it was great. episode. It was great. I, yeah, she was. She, I mean, the 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 judge, the judge sketch wasn't my favorite, but otherwise, I thought it was. I thought it was great. I thought it was, every bit of it was really entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's it yeah, she's so powerful I grew up <laughs> I, I grew up a big SNL fan and like as far as stand up like you know I watched those guys and then I got into like I started getting into Chris Rock cause you know Bigger and Blacker came out when I was in high school and mm-hmm. um, then I started like getting into like more alt comedians like Dimitri Martin and like mm. Mark, Mike Birbiglia and like people like that and that's when I kind of like I was like you know I, could I do that like cause I was always like I'm an only child I was always like the kid in school that would like crack jokes like um, like those, you know, growing up, you like, you'd have that uncle that would tell you like those dirty jokes. Mm-hmm. And I would go to school and tell those jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, when I got to college, I was like, this is what I, I want to do it. And I always talked about it. I was, I was like, man, I want to do stand up, man. I want to do stand up. I didn't know how. Um, and then one day, some of my friends were like, you need to shut the fuck up and do it. <laughs> so I started, I just started Googling open mics and, uh, it was, uh, I want to say, February of 2010 was my first open mic at Eastville mm-hmm. Comedy Club. It was a Monday. It was I used to, at the time I was working. Um, I was working at Central Booking in Manhattan, so like in the jail. Yeah. Um. I I used to we I would interview people that had been arrested to determine whether they could be eligible for bail or not. And then I worked seven to three, and then I, I was like, All right, I'm going to the open mic at six o'clock. And I went. It didn't I didn't suck. <laughs> uh. And then that was it. And then the second time I went, I didn't suck again. And then the third time I sucked. And I was like, okay, well, the first two times were pretty good. So, <laughs> <laughs> how would you how would you say your skills um, evolved from? So you're doing it eleven years yeah. from like the beginning versus now. Oh, uh, man, I, I I I I recently watched like a set from like my first year, and I was like, that's awful. Like, it's, <laughs> so bad. like it's cringe. It's like I'm, is like I. There, it, I was doing the, all the things that like I'll see a new comic do now. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, nah, I mean a lot of it is just comfort, comfort. Um, like my first year, like my first few years, actually, I couldn't, I couldn't get on stage without a drink. I had to drink. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a show that I did, and I had produced it. I booked it the whole nine. It was great. And like, I, uh, I got, I had an edible. I got pretty drunk. And then I thought it went well. It was recorded. I watched my set. And I was like, that was the worst thing. I've never, I've never been that bad before. Mm-hmm. And like, I was laughing before, before punchlines. I was like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like sweaty and weird. And I was like, okay, well. I you thought you so funny though. Like you're the, you guys <laughs> laughing I, I mean, before people, your punchlines. I guess people laughed. I don't know. Like I, I thought it was funny. Um, but I was, like, so I, I was like, you know what? I don't care how nervous I am. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to. You're persistent. You know, yeah, I'm going yeah. to do it sober. And then what I started doing, because I, I like, you know, you do that, that regular the new comic thing where you, yeah. you're doing jokes you think that the audience wants to hear. Mm-hmm. And then I started like, well, what if I talk about things that are personal to me? Mm-hmm. And then um, right around. I was about three, four years in, and I, I got, I became a diabetic. I, mean, I got diagnosed with type two diabetes, uh, which Damn. turns out I'm a type one diabetic. But doctors are stupid, so because <laughs> <laughs> I lost a bunch of weight, and like they were like, "How are you still diabetic?" And I was like, "That's not how diabetes works. <laughs> like it doesn't go away." Yeah. Oh my but, gosh. Uh, they were like, "No," because um, I don't know. It was a whole thing. Doctors are stupid. Um, but I was like, I started talking about diabetes because. Um, I went to see a nutritionist and she was like, you eat too much bread. And I was like, what the fuck kind of advice is that <laughs> <laughs> from a medical professional? Like you went to med school and that's what you want. You trying to tell me not to eat bread? Like I love bread. <laughs> you gotta stay off that gluten. Yeah. yeah. And then I started talking, I was like, one day I just started thinking about, I was just like, I can't eat bread. Like I fucking love bread. Like what about focaccia? What about, uh, you know, Portuguese rolls? What about, what, what about brioche? Mm. And then one day my friend was like, you like a lot of bread. And I was like, what if I just started talking about bread on stage? And then I was like, <laughs> I started ranking bread. Oh, that's so great. Wait, you have to hear this. So originally. Do you, was, you actually believe in this rank? Yeah. Okay. So originally it was 10. And I, 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 every time I do, I do the bit on stage, I'm like, I don't have enough time to tell you 
how much bread I like, but <laughs> I'll break it down to a top five. My number one favorite bread is brioche. That's, a, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the best bread of all time, and I'll mm-hmm. tell you why. It's light, it's buttery, you eat it by itself. If you toast it, it's delicious. You, you, don't, you, don't need, you can make French toast with brioche, it's great. It's delicious. Um, I compare it to Michael Jordan on stage, but people, a lot of people didn't wow. want Jordan in the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. And two is ciabatta. Mm. Uh, oh, ciabatta is great, mm-hmm. and I, I always get that reaction. People love ciabatta. Ciabatta is a good bread. It's, it's sturdy, it's a hearty bread. Mm-hmm. Um, you butter it, toast it, it's delicious. But here's the thing uh, it's if you need to butter it, you cannot eat dry ciabatta. I've tried, it's, it's, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why it's this kind of paper of bread. It will get you but so far. <laughs> it needs help to get to the final. Or it's a little oil. Yeah. Right, a little oil. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Loyal uh, bread. <laughs> uh, number three is uh, English muffins. Mm. Um, I love English muffins. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Okay. English muffins. Okay. And especially when it's That's butter. Three. I would. I like to do. I like to do butter and and some preserves. I like Oof. pineapple or peach preserves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes I get crazy. You know, half cream cheese, half rib jelly. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Number four. For sure. uh, I don't. I don't. So on stage, I'll just stop at three because people because I. Their eyes start to glaze over because I'm talking about bread for five minutes. Well, they're not passionate about it. Right, they're not. They just don't get it. They don't get it. Number four, though, is focaccia. Now, focaccia is a good bread because it's sturdy enough when you dip it in the tomato sauce after you eat a pasta. Mm. It it Mm. soaks up all that. Mm. This is a restaurant I like. I used to work there. There's a restaurant in the city called uh, La Pecora Bianca. It's an Italian restaurant. If you ever go, get yourself the tagliatelle with the bolognese. Get some focaccia on the side. They might not have it, but whatever bread they have, dip it in. Dip it in the sauce. It's really good. It's very. It's very sturdy. Sounds um, so yummy. Uh, and number five. Now, so it's been a while since I've really re-ranked my top ten. So it, this could be any number of breads, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna try to switch it up because I think number five. I should. I usually say I say Portuguese rolls. And I, like mm. think about Portuguese rolls. If you've already got ciabatta, you don't need Portuguese rolls. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say, hmm, this is I'm gonna say rye. Oh yes, uh, I'm gonna say rye. Uh, I almost yeah. forgot about rye. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Mm, that's like a it. good uh. marble rye. Mm. Will make your day. Yeah, like, like a rye know. makes or breaks like the sometimes the um the like a yeah, yeah that sandwich, or yeah. you're having it with like tongue corn beef yeah, uh, yeah right yeah. with the like the spicy mustard yeah. or, um so but you didn't is, say sourdough. Huh? All right, see, so sourdough has a rank in it and non it's, it's a, non's at my top. Non's a top ten. Sourdough is top ten, but not, but top, not top. top. Here's the thing wow. about sourdough. Like, uh, I think sourdough. Uh, uh, first off, it, it does leave a weird taste in my mouth, and that's mm-hmm. strange. But I like it. I, I do like sourdough. <laughs> the second thing is, with the last year and a half, people making sourdough all the time. Like, oh. uh, we, we get it. It's good. We get it. They don't get any more press. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah. attention. Sourdough is. I was like, into you know, it before. It's, it's always gonna be a that's top. Two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, naan, I'm, it's interesting. I had a garlic naan one one time that was really really good. Now I might have to crack my top my top five. I might have to jump in. Not is the, is the, all the texture. Yeah, it is the softness and the fact that you can like also pita bread. So I you pita know bread, being middle yeah. middle eastern, say, yeah. you're going like yeah. It, I mean, it's interesting that, so that, that, that I can tell you middle eastern because you said naan and 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 uh, yeah. and pita, uh, bread. pita bread and not challah. Uh, I feel like that's... Uh, I'm a Persian uh, Jew, so like, Hollis yeah. should be in there somewhere. I, yeah. I feel like we're getting political. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, hey, I, I eat my challah during the proper, about white bread the proper now, traditions, no. Jewish traditions that I need to. Uh, white bread has had its time in the sun. Yeah. The white bread is the make America great again of breads, okay? Like, yes, yeah, yes. When you have Wonder Bread mm. in those old ass, like, black and white TV commercials... Yeah. Get, no, I get out of like, here I with your like polka a, dot and sleeve that you put the <laughs> yes. fucking bread in. Get the fuck out We're of here. We're fun bread. I do like. It's not I, a carnival. Yeah, I do like. Uh, I do like a potato bread though. Yes, potato, like oh, you know, that's good. That's a good one. How do you guys feel about pretzel bread? Oh, uh, I like. See, okay, so I I like it. I do, however, like it suspect that it, it's a yeah. it's an a, <laughs> yeah, it's an event bread, right. right? So it's like if you it's almost I feel like sourdough is kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's like it's good because you're not going to get it all the time. But when you see, it, you're like, 
you know, I didn't really want that sandwich, but the bread made right. me want to get it, right? That's like literally all the fast food restaurants, like Wendy's specifically, yeah. their whole thing is like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I wouldn't have got this burger, but it's a pretzel yeah. bun. It's a, and it'll be a regular burger. Yeah. Sourdoughs are huge with like, if you're doing um, like a uh, Panera, mm. they're mm. bread bowls. Yes. You do sourdough. Yes. If my mom would take a sourdough in a home and she would put like a... Um, onion ranch or something like dip yeah, inside yeah. the center and you take all the other stuff out in the sauce and then yeah, like so it point. is different it is different there are definitely party breads yes sure yes. Yeah, yeah. yes yes like yes well, how do you feel about soda bread wait buns we didn't talk about buns we, well okay but, okay so <laughs> <laughs> this whole podcast will be about bread guys just so you know <laughs> I've done it before uh, <laughs> So buns, would, I, I like I like a Kaiser, like regular. Mm. You know, I'm very classic with a well, sesame bun is fine. Um, but like, I think we've gotten to the point, like you brought up, like a lot of these fast food places are using like regular bread instead of buns. Like mm. you can get a pretzel bread, a sourdough. Uh, you know, some places, um, like I know, what is it, Arby's that they use Hawaiian rolls. Mm. So you know, I. I think we can lump them all together at this point, which is unfair to buns, but, you know. <laughs> Hello there, it's Jordan Freed from Late Night Hump, the person you're probably listening to on the podcast right now. I just wanted to let you know that we are coming back with our interdimensional improv show that takes you through space, time, and different realities over the course of an hour-long show that's made up on the spot based off of your suggestions. Our show is going to be Friday, November 12th, 2021 at 9.30 p.m. Get there around 9 p.m. so you can get settled in. It's at the Players Theater at 115 McDougal Street between West 3rd and Bleecker Streets in New York, New York. York, baby. We're going to be in the Steve and Mary Skuros Theater, the Players Theater, third floor loft. Uh, you will have to have a proof of vaccination, but that should be fine for all of you guys. And these shows are really a ton of fun. They're really the best thing that we do. Do not miss this. Go to latenighthump.com slash shows to find the ticket link. Once again, that's latenighthump.com slash shows for the ticket link and when you go there and buy your tickets you could use code hump to get 50 percent off it's definitely worth the code uh do that for yourself get your tickets early before the show sells out because we're only going to quarterly shows now we used to do monthly so come on out fill out the seats enjoy our first show all this fall back to the show what about like scones? Is that okay. bread or is that a pastry? That is, that is a pastry. Uh, <laughs> Chris, will, croissants. Croissants oh, are a bread. That's a bread. Yeah, croissants they are. are a bread. Like if you, hey, Dunkin' Donuts used to have chicken salad and it was really good. Yes. The person that had it, I think. Oh like, no, I, I had it too. Oh, I, I was a fan. Dunkin' Donuts yes. chicken salad is pretty fire. Yes. And like if you get it on a croissant, a little bit of cheese, some bacon, it's the best sandwich they had. Yes. They, they don't love me so they got rid of it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, but they're you know what, like, Duncan, they just go with the tides. They, yeah. they they really, they follow things that they think are going to be successful. Oh, yeah, yeah, they follow trends. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That, that's the whole reason why they made the avocado toast, and then yeah. in two weeks when it wasn't popular enough, they made avocado they toast with bacon, bacon on top of it. And then, or then they added that, yeah, yeah. And then all the plant-based people are like, oh, well, another thing we can't have at fast right. food places. Yeah. My girlfriend gets, she, she gets the avocado toast all the time. Like, I'm, I, I personally, I don't like avocado. Um, I know that's blasphemous, but. I just, it just, I'm a texture guy. I just don't like, I don't like anything that's, that's pushy. Fair. Mm. That's fair. I don't fair. like bananas. I don't like avocado. If I need oatmeal? Oatmeal. Well, I like oatmeal. That's different. Mm. So I don't understand. I don't understand. So Jordan is not the other member of Late Night. Have you met Jordan? Have you met uh, Jordan? I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. What's, what's the lesson? Free. So he's a stand-up oh. comedian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the noise on something. Yeah. Um, was he runs that show in Trenton, right? Yeah. Have you been yeah, to Yeah, that's events? how I know. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was, wasn't sure. I couldn't recall if he was at Weedman. Yeah, you I did that show one time. Okay, yeah. got you. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is a good time as any to plug the Weedman show. Guys, the first, second, and third <laughs> Wednesday of every single month. We got the Wee Man show. You might get some great stand-ups like yes. Stan. You might get some improv. You don't really know what you're going to get. It's full of surprises. I think, honestly, it gets pretty crazy and weird. So going down to the Wee Man's. Also, 
the women's joining is just a wonderful venue. Wonderful atmosphere. Yeah, great place. It's really cool. And a I've bunch only of people. I've been the one time. It's, yeah, it's, it's really a bunch cool. of people still tune in through Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and we have the recordings uh, up on our social media that we put every time after it happens. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a, that was a cool really show. Awesome. Yeah. Stan, um, you, you sorry, what was my point? What was your point? I don't know. Somebody brought up soda bread. Oh seen, yes, I was being. That shit's bread. dry. Okay, that's okay. not good. Oh, wait, okay, that's not. Wait, good. wait, wait. Okay. Not good. Irish? I am Irish. Yeah, yes. So Irish. yes. So first off, to say all soda bread is trash is just not really being <laughs> fair to soda bread as an. As I guess I haven't had a good one. Yes. I will say, I think that like there are a lot of soda breads that are dry and not like a, oh, I accidentally made this dry, but like, that's oh, this is. is the way it I is. I know, that's the way I don't like but, scones. But, right, but like, do don't, wait, wait, do not mouth. mention, don't, don't say scones like soda bread and scones are <laughs> the same thing. They're, and they're the moisture, dumb. they do. I, I, soda bread has more moisture, I it guess. It does. But, yeah. And I, I will say, I think. Well, it depends on the scone. I, I think I think also to your point about I think it was which which bread was it one of these that you needed, that you couldn't do it dry is that chipotta yeah I think sour um, um soda bread is the same thing I think soda bread dry it's like it's not not for everyone you butter on the if you, you look at but, butter yeah. or margarine and like you like, it's Mar- warm yeah. or you toast it a little bit okay. and the thing with soda bread too is like it's it serves many purposes it could be a dessert bread it could be a breakfast bread it could be a snack bread interesting not a sandwich bread necessarily but you can't be everything though so it's funny about scones though. Because so the restaurant I used to work at had they had I don't know if they have it anymore but they used to have these apricot and honey scones every week and they were very very not I can't the word moist is it triggers me but mm. they're very, they're not very <laughs> um, but I did meet a girl from the UK a few years like great person um, she was visiting and we like we met, we matched on Tinder and like I showed her around for like a day. Mm. Um, she she was she was like all about scones and I was like yeah I guess I've never had at that point I never had one I went to like Starbucks and it's what she called them scones and I was like I don't know what you're saying <laughs> um, silly we call them yeah <laughs> <laughs> we call them scones scones you, we know the English language right. we're yeah, we. American <laughs> like, she was like yeah do you know where I can get a good scone and I was like I don't know what that is. Uh, she, I was like, I know what scones are. Is that what you mean? Because we can go to Starbucks. <laughs> mm-hmm. She was, but she was like, yeah, that's totally different over there too. Like, yeah. it's like they're like filled with jelly and like filled with like all yeah. types of stuff. So, yeah, they do true. a lot of things weird over true. there. I don't know. Yeah. What I was just saying earlier was, um, yeah, Jordan and I have been like, we're gonna be plant based for like three years. So when you were saying that they make, uh, you were saying something about, oh my god, what were you talking about? You were saying oatmeal? something. No, there was something. We were else. we just talked about oatmeal though. We did say. Really? Like oh, food. that's what that's what made me think of. Um, we found it. Mushy food. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Jordan does the same thing where he doesn't. He eats things like based off of texture. Like yeah. doesn't like like you were saying about avocado. Yeah. But mm-hmm. then he eats avocado. But then he doesn't like oatmeal. And then you like you don't like avocado, no, but you like oatmeal. It's weird. Mm-hmm. What is it about? They're both mushy. Though? I also put I put stuff in my oatmeal. Yes. I'll yeah, put, like, like raisins, walnuts, raisins, cranberries. Honey. Yeah, I'll, 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 diced apples if I can. Yo, oatmeal's so good. So that's when nice. I eat oatmeal, it's never like it's, it's never, never by itself. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By itself could be so delicious. No, you yeah, get, like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. yeah, it's I, a flexible food. You have a lot yeah. of options with it. But you'll you'll just never like avocados. No, I won't try it. If, if avocado touches anything I'm eating, I'm not eating. Wait, you won't try it. Wait, so you have you you you've you, had it? You've had it. You no. did not like you. Oh, you. Oh, so you're taking a stance against avocado. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I'm very anti avocado. Um, I okay. How I'll, do you know you don't like it if you never had it? I, I just I just know it does. I look. I've tasted avocado on by accident, and I'm like, it doesn't taste like. Anything, so like <laughs> by accident, who put this here? Yeah. <laughs> it just ended oh, up man. on like a sandwich that I got. I was like, who? Why? It, first off, it doesn't taste like anything. What's the point? <laughs> Uh, you th- that is true. The taste it's is not hard flavorful. to nail down. Yeah, the same thing like celery. Fry. Yeah, well, celery, celery, you can dip in like ranch or something like that. But like, right, celery so, like, itself, it, it has an unusual like ants on a log with peanut butter and raisins. I can do that. But like, celery by itself, I get it. Same thing with cauliflower. I don't like cauliflower because cauliflower doesn't taste like anything. It tastes just bland and like they say it like takes over. The, like, no, it's no, no cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> like, but. Uh, with avocado, like the other thing too is like my grandma. I watch her eat avocado, and she. Well, this is back when she had her permanent teeth, her false teeth put in permanently. But like growing up, she would take her teeth out, and she would eat like bananas and and uh, and avocado. I'm like, you know what? I don't need any of that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's the trauma. It's, it's like hard. The, the, the it's the always goes back like, to the trauma. Mm. Like, yeah, it's like watching a baby eat. I was like, I don't, I don't want any of that. Yeah. Well, you used to be a baby, you know. 
obviously evil. See, here's the thing. You start blame, that way, you end that yeah. way. <laughs> I blame my mom because my mom, if, when I was a kid, I was a picky eater. But like, there's, to me, there's no such thing as a picky eater. It's just a parent that doesn't feel like dealing with the kid's bullshit. Yo. Yeah, true. Like, blame I, it on her parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't eat grapes until I was 12. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and it was only because... Grape was for 12 years. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't... I didn't, I'm not a big fruit guy either. But growing up, <laughs> I, just, I just didn't. And then <laughs> uh, one time... So my aunt got married and moved to Houston. I went to visit and I took a really early morning flight. And I was flying down to Houston. They gave me breakfast on the flight. And this is how you know it's a long time ago. Because they don't do that shit. No they more. don't. Oh my yeah, gosh. no. So this is like the mid You have to pay for your carry-on. Yeah. Now. Yeah, it's the worst. Flying used to be fun. Because the yeah. pandemic, they lost money. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, everyone's like, all right, we should like drive our feet. It's the entire yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. So they, you could like, you like, you, it was, it was like, I remember I flew, I flew to Houston twice. So it's four, four flights. One, there was one flight. I remember if I was coming or going, some guy asked for seconds of the airline food. And it was the most <laughs> insane thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, Did he remember, get it? Yeah. Remember, <laughs> remember back in the day, they'd come around and be like, chicken or beef, chicken or beef. And then yeah. He was like, chicken. And then he ate it all. And then the stewardess came back around and he was like, can I get another chicken? And she was like, sure. And I was like, what? <laughs> you can do that? That's amazing. Yeah. And he just, he was like, like I, he must have got out of jail or something. Because it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was most fascinating. But like, I flew to Houston one morning and they gave me a Belgian waffle, a handful of grapes. And it was seedless, which is very important because yes. that's one of the things about me and fruit that I don't really I gotta like I gotta do work, I gotta spit, I gotta peel stuff. But for, spit but stuff for out. grapes mm. though, they're small and the grape spitting seeds out of a who who wants to do that? Nobody anymore. Do they that? Just like, don't have to. At least an orange I get. Oh, that's like work. Or watermelon, those are don't eat that either. Yeah, um, I'm very. Those the, if it's riddled, I never get it. With the seeds though, watermelon. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you're right. It's it's a hassle. What does that taste like? Today? Nothing. Watermelon. Mm. Yeah. Watermelon's juicy. It's totally got a watermelon. Seventy five percent water. Yeah, it's a lot. Of water. <laughs> but that that melon part though, <laughs> it might be a lot of water. But Again, when it comes to the melon, only had it one time. It wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I I'm a, I'm like that. What about vegetables? Guy. Do you? I, do I, I've gotten I've gotten the hang with vegetables. Um, <laughs> what did you like, eat as a child? Just chicken. A lot of chicken and rice. A lot mm, of chicken and rice. Wow. Uh, I don't like peas. Um, mm, yeah. I do like. I'll tell. You, it's easier to tell you what I what I do like. I like <laughs> it's a shorter list. Yeah, I like broccoli. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good one. Carrots. Uh. I don't know, you might have to start naming vegetables now. Corn? Does that count? I like corn. Yes. You like cucumbers? Yeah. You like okay, them. here's the thing about cucumbers. Now, <laughs> I'll never sit down and eat a cucumber, but like if you chop it up in a salad, I'd be like, all right, I can fix it. So Yo, yeah. I agree with that. I mean, uh, I recently was like taught like slicing up cucumbers and putting it on your bagel with cream cheese. Ooh, never done that before. Interesting. Amazing. Very interesting. Yeah, and then also if you had dill um, seasoning, pickle, little chips. Oh, on top of the cucumber and the uh, cream cheese. Yeah. But that's yeah. excessive. I don't really put chips. So that's like early pickles, in the morning. Though. But I like pickles on a burger. But cucumbers and pickles are different stages. They are right. Very different foods. Yeah, yeah. Very pickle different. really changes the yeah. thing, doesn't it? Like I, I like if you, like I would if I get a McDonald's burger and there's pickle on it, I'd be fine. But like I'm not. Like it's weird because like you would pickles. think that like uh like you get a deli sandwich and you get like a little a little pickle with it. I'm like Oh, I love that part. That's a fear. I get upset if my sandwich doesn't come with the pickle on really? the side. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a pickle guy at all. Mm. Wow. That's like... a texture thing also, because that's right. a crunch. Yeah. Right into but it. I, I do like a crunch, but I don't like that particular crunch. Mm, interesting. Do you like coleslaw? Mm. I do. Yeah. I've had yeah. bad coleslaw. There oh, is a, yeah. there's there's oh, yeah, definitely yeah. people out there who mess it up. <laughs> but when it's good, it's good. Yes. Mm. You need the right around right amount of mayo. Yes. Too much mayo uh-huh. on it. Like yes. I like what I like was coleslaw on a pulled pork sandwich. Oh yes, uh, like, you well, said like, it. We went there. Mm-hmm. The worst, the worst part about like is when you go to a diner and they give you that like that little cup of like yeah, it's like finely chopped up yeah, like little like, squares. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put a little love and effort into your coleslaw. That's what it is. The, yeah. I, I feel like coleslaw is one of those foods where when you taste it, you could tell how, so how much someone cared about yeah. making this. Because when you like go good coleslaw, you're like, wow, there was effort put yeah. into this. But when yeah. you go to a shitty it's place. It's not easy to master. Yeah, I try co- making coleslaw at home. And then I'm like. It's hard. Yeah. I'm not satisfied. Do you, do you cook a lot? Or like, do you like. Yeah. 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 What kind of stuff do you, like, do you cook usually? Uh, depends on the season. 
but I'm you know pa- pasta is pretty easy. I would you know whatever is easy. Uh, I love potatoes, so any any I'll, I'll eat potatoes any any way. Um, I so now now that I'm older, I, I have IBS and I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, but mm-hmm. I do love mac and cheese. Um, I make a mean chili. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like Haitian food, there's an okra stew that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's kind of like gumbo in a, in a way. Mm-hmm. At least the way my mom makes it, she'll uh, she'll throw a crab in. I don't like crab. I like crab meat. I don't like the effort of eating a crab. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very very lazy. Um, I don't even like eating shrimp with the tails on. Like I gotta like <laughs> like I went. I, I introduced. I took my girlfriend and my mom over the weekend, and my mom cooked for us because her her diet's all weird now. So she, my mom made shrimp, and I was like, "You're slipping, lady." Like back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you would have cut these tails off. Now I gotta do work. I gotta do work while I'm eating. I don't like. Yeah. So someone bringing you out to eat entire lobster and you have to break yourself is a nightmare. I mean, I like lobster though. I do. But it's, right. so, it's, fun. Fun. it's so fun to take apart a sure, lobster. Yeah, if, it's if so that's, fun. If that's, that's the activity. If, yeah, if you if, if if that's the the impetus of like what we're doing, if we have crab legs, all right, cool. We're getting crab legs. I'm signing up for this. Mm-hmm. But. It's difficult for me to be like, if I'm at a seafood place, I'm like, I'm going to get the easiest thing possible. Right. Have you been to Haiti? Uh, not in a long time. I went one time in 92 when I was seven. Uh, How much do you remember from that trip? I remember, I remember a, a decent amount. Um, I, we were there for, I want to say 10 days, maybe two weeks. Um, so my family's from the northern part of Haiti. Um in a, so we're uh, an hour and a half away from uh, Port-au-Prince. Uh, there's a city called St. Mark where my mom grew up. And like maybe half an hour from there, maybe yeah, maybe longer. It's been a while. I don't remember exactly. But there's a small town called uh, Pierre Payen where my, my grandma and my grandfather are from. So uh, I remember getting to the airport. I remember it took us like an hour and a half to get to my grandma's town. And, um, so this is, again, back, like back in the day, Haiti was safe to fly to now it's like super dangerous. Yeah. Like, if you go now, like you can't give any indication that you have money at all. Like you can't wow. even, you have to dress bummy because they'll, they'll clock you from the airport. Wow. Back then there's a picture of me and everybody. I'm basically dressed like Steve Harvey. It was like, I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I got like a three piece suit on and it's fucking 90. Eight degrees or whatever. Yeah, I was gonna say the heat. It's hot as balls. <laughs> and then you're uh, seven. Yeah, I was seven. Seven, three, yeah. seven. Okay, I have a visual. Yeah. And then I I get there. <laughs> so uh, I, I we get we get to so there's a um, there's a there used to be a river that you had to cross to get to my grandma's town. It's dried up now, but at the time it was like it was a strong river. Mm-hmm. My grandfather pretty much carried us back and forth across this river. Oh my god! So we could cross it. And then it's a, from there, from the river, it's like another like 20 minutes, like a 20, 15, 20 minute walk. And the first thing I see when I get to the, because my grandma had this huge courtyard, first thing I see is a little kid riding his, riding a bike. He gets off the bike and he's fully naked, like the most naked boy you've ever seen in life. <laughs> and like cock out and everything. I'm just like, he's like trying to tell me, he's like, you want, like, ask me if I want to ride his bike. And I was like, no, man, like, like you, your balls yeah, were all on the bike. No. <laughs> Um, but he's yeah, just a free soul. Sure, yeah, or poor. Didn't have you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I no, said. I was, yeah. Um, yeah. No, uh, I remember uh, going to the beach. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I remember I got I got sick because I drank the water. Like the because there was my grandma had she didn't have indoor plumbing. She had an outhouse, and there was like a a garden hose that where, where we got mm-hmm. water from. Mm-hmm. So I drank out of that and I guess my body wasn't used to it. I got I got pretty sick. Mm-hmm. Um You still I, have family there? Uh yeah, I think so. Nobody I know personally. Nobody okay. I've met personally, but like I know a lot of my mom's cousins are still there. You have interest of ever going back? I would love to. If it was if it was safe, I would I would definitely go. Um, I the, do you remember like the uh the food at all? Like oh, you yeah. said that and yeah, like what absolutely. you're cook like obviously what they have there is yeah. I gained weight because you know growing up a picky eater, like I just it was mm. like there was but um, they I it was funny I every morning I had cornflakes with like fresh cow's milk and like I don't know if you guys ever had fresh cow's milk but it's like naturally sweet mm-hmm. and it was fantastic uh, 
and then like whatever they would cook like, so like the, I had no options it was like mm-hmm. either cook either eat what they cook or starve yeah. and mm-hmm. so like I I probably went to Haiti maybe 50 pounds I left 65 pounds like I was mm-hmm. I put on weight uh, I watched my grandmother kill a chicken uh, I watched my grandfather kill a goat how were those experiences? So it's funny seeing my grandma now and then, like remember what she was like then. It's like my grandma now is in a wheelchair. She's like got she's missing a leg and like she's like old and like she's like falls asleep in front of the TV all the time because she's ninety four. Mm-hmm. Back then, my gra- I, she, I don't know how she did it, but she grabbed this chicken by its neck. She was like, "Wow!" Just grabbed it and just swung it around in the air, <laughs> oh my God. and then dropped it. And then you know how like it still yeah. it was still running around. <laughs> uh-huh. And then like. It finally fell. I watched her like scald it, peel the feathers off, scald it again, peel the feathers off, scrape the skin, and like cook. It was probably one of the best tasting chicken. She wow. did, it was like a chicken soup kind of thing she did. Like still to this day, I was like, I, I don't think I've ever had chicken that tastes that good. Wow, since. that's incredible. Cause like right from the farm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Exactly. We don't. We're not gonna have any other like yeah. ancestors that do that right. i mean unless, unless you do have a family that works directly on a farm right, right. and even unless then like i yeah. feel like the, you know the the farming industry like they force them to do things like the government gives them subsidies like well but you gotta give these chickens like this kind of feed or whatever right different, there's something right. different about it like i think oh now you have just gmo everything right yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that tastes different yeah now. I, I i i would i would love to go back to haiti and like you know you know live like not maybe not live on a farm necessarily because i don't know what i would do i don't know how to farm but still like there's something to be said about the food like when it's made from there yeah like goat i love goat uh and i would imagine you know goat tastes better anywhere else that isn't like like you said the gmos but like i remember i watched my grandfather he like they they, i don't even know how they did it because by the time I came, I came around to the backyard where they, because they had hung it up by its mm-hmm. like, legs, mm-hmm. and they started skinning it. I don't know how they knocked it out, but um, we had goat for like a week. It was great. Yeah. That didn't alarm you as a young boy seeing that? You know what I think about it? Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and no, then I had I, to do stand up comedy <laughs> because that trauma. Was I do <laughs> have the, the, I I can picture it right now if I close my eyes. I know exactly where it was. I know what it looked like. They skinned it. Like they had a bucket, like a yeah, little you never tub for the blood. Like, yeah. So I I think I just kind of like not repressed it, but I was like, I, now that you mention it, yeah, that's actually kind of traumatizing. Sorry, I don't mean to open up no, old no. wounds. <laughs> Listen, it was still delicious. I think in my mind, like, it was less good than it was. No yeah, memory, it was a right? different experience. Yeah, yes. in my mind, I'm like, you know what? Well, it couldn't have been that traumatizing because I ate it. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because I think it's very easy to not think about like all the steps that your food goes through before yeah. it gets to you. Because especially when you are getting things that are not from the area, it's there's like, grocery store. Yeah. yeah, it's just trucked over here. Yeah. yeah, I was at the supermarket last week, and I was like, yeah, I saw that. I had never seen this before, but they had a rabbit. And I was like, huh. Well, I'm gonna come back for that. One. And two, like, I where like how like who Yeah, I've had rabbit. Yeah. Had, my mom it, brought like it was uh like except obviously it was like, you know, skin, but I think it was the whole body, not yeah. the head not the face, but I think that no, wait, maybe it was the whole thing. Um, but frozen. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to eat it on, sorry if this offends anybody, but I wanted to eat it on Easter because Easter was coming up and we yeah. just had it in the freezer. And I'm just yeah. like, I thought it was, you know, it was a theme. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was not theme, but Thanksgiving mom, is literally that. It's like, we it's eat a, a turkey. The turkey is the image of Thanksgiving and it's all because we're about to eat this thing. Yeah. But mom was not about it. She's like, we can't. It's like, we can't. Also, we're Jewish, by the way. I'm like, you're not even personally offended by this. Right. But it's just... <laughs> And she's just like, no, we're not gonna eat a rabbit on Easter. That's that's psychotic. But a lamb that's is like, just as good. I no, don't I don't know. More like, I think the the bunny just tasted um, similar to chicken. It yeah. was good. I like. Was it, it gamey? Like was it, was it was it? Cause I'm trying to remember, it it didn't. It wasn't that memorable to be honest. Yeah. I don't think I liked it that much. Um, probably a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just I trying to think that, back. This is years ago. Like. Uh, 
I've had venison. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Venison is good, but mm-hmm. like compared like, <clears throat> compared to like like it was like it is a little gamey. Mm-hmm. But it's good. Like I, you know, I've had um, I've had goat. I've had frog's legs, which you know, that definitely tastes like chicken. Yeah, it's like stringier chicken. That's what yeah. It yeah. Like. Uh, I can't think of any other uh weird or not or non-traditional meats yeah. that I've had. Is there anything you really want to try that you haven't had yet? Uh, actually, I've had elk. I want to try. I know somebody said ostrich. Yeah. There's a burger yeah. place that I went to. And kangaroo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How, dude, how do you think? How do you think that is? I really I'd be curious to try uh, that. The person said they liked it. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they compared it to. I don't but... think just about anything. Well, also, I think some animals do surprise you when they taste fishier. Oh, and really? you're like, it's a land man. Like a thing, like mm. certain, they just, you don't think it's going to be. Yeah, I don't know. You don't think it's going to taste that way. I don't mean specifically the ostrich, like yeah. with the birds, yeah. but. What was alligator like? Because you had the alligator recently. Oh, right? I hated alligator. Yeah. Alligator was, I didn't ever, uh, recently, not when I went to New Orleans. Oh, wait a minute. You're right. I had uh, shrimp and alligator cheesecake. That was different. I had it. You know, so. <laughs> crazy. The, the place that people's minds can go to create things like that. Like, Your face. Think? <laughs> when you said shrimp and alligator, and I. The, you could have gone anywhere. I would have never guessed you said cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it is not the dessert. Um, it is not oh, like, oh. it is, everybody thinks that, but that is literally what it's called. But it is like a texture. In, like not. A co- it's not cold or even, it's not even texture similar to a cheesecake. I guess they could have called it pie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't know why okay. they didn't do that. But it's a slice and how it's made and how it's filled is more like, I think, a cheesecake technique than it would be a pie. Okay. But anyway, uh, that was delicious. But I've had like, different forms of alligator and like they're it's tough it's a tough meat yeah, for I mean, sure I and i like yeah just knowing the texture is so rough and everything i'm like this is exactly how an alligator tastes like of course an alligator would be smooth and soft like it would be rough and t- right. like it would be yeah, a yeah, piece yeah. of shit like to bite into i'm like yeah yeah like alligators but how do you i can't imagine even getting through the scales to get to where the meat is it seems like a yeah lot of work. yeah i've had like alligator jerky before okay and like that's just me, what you were just saying made me think of that because it like that was really yeah. t- it was not I didn't really like it yeah. but yeah that that's one place true. I like gosh I wanna, it's I want to go to New Orleans skinny and alligator has been, yeah yo New Orleans is yeah. really fun I went for the first time yeah recently like it's, love it the food food and you I'll go anywhere where there's good food I mm-hmm. oh my god that's, and that's one thing I love about stand up is like when I do crowd work and I ask where somebody's from like. Oh, tell me about the food. Um, yeah. So you're just using stand up as a vehicle to. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so people use Yelp. I use stand up yeah. <laughs> to find out the best food spots. Like I, I, I did a, I did a show. I did a festival in Philly, and I was like, before I went, I went on Twitter. I was like, all right, I'm going to Philly. Tell me where to get a cheesesteak. And everybody was like, "This is one place called Jim's, I think it's called, mm-hmm. and that's the place. Yeah, it's supposed to be really good. And I went there. It was fantastic." Oh, uh, I when I went to Boston, see, Bo- that's the thing about Boston. Like, there's so I I have family in Boston, so I know where they go for like Asian food. Mm-hmm. But what's mm-hmm. like a Boston food? Like chowder. Yeah, I'm a, like, <laughs> yeah sea, seafood, a good seafood. I guess. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. Love. I'm a big soup guy. I'm as far as breads. I think soups are d- right there. Yeah, uh, you know, I could, I could probably, I could probably give you a top. I five. thought you need a top five list of soups. Uh, maybe in no particular order because I haven't really give, I haven't really given this a lot of thought. But definitely a chicken noodle. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I love a, I love a seafood chowder, mm-hmm. uh, but it's tied with the lobster bisque. So I'll say lobster bisque in the head. Okay. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I like uh, the classic tomato with the grilled cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, Italian wedding. Ooh. Uh, okay. And I'm gonna say broccoli cheddar. No slip pea. No way. Like never... No like peas. Yeah. Oh, I forgot it's about whole, that. Whole Darn it! You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's an entire meal of the one thing you. I eat. and it's funny. It's like fun. I've, you know, people have been like, "Well, we'll put a lot of ham in it because I know you're supposed to put ham and split pea." Yeah, sometimes like, they have it. Sometimes they don't. I don't yeah. care how much ham you put in there. I'm not eating that. It looks, <laughs> it looks gross. Oh, but I know it's, but it's so good. It does look like the vomit out of the girl's mouth. Yeah. In, yes. Uh, uh, the the actresses. Actresses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's I think exactly what actually, I think. I think they, they might have actually used split pea soup. I think, I think you're right. I think they did. They have ruined the entire, entire generation of parents were not able to get yeah, their, like, their oh, kids' seats on pea soup. Never. Yeah. Well, so Stan, you also, you live in New York, right? Yeah. So you probably are exposed to a lot of food. Yeah. And, like, so is that, is like the variety a part of the reason why you like New York? If you I like New York. I would never leave. 
I will never mm-hmm. leave New York. I don't care how expensive it is. I will be homeless, but I will live in New York. I don't mm-hmm. give a shit. It's my home. I was born there. Like the the thing I love about New York is like not not just the food, but it's like there's this, there's this, there's a this sense of like there are people that are born, raised, and lived and died in New York and never spoke mm-hmm. a lick of English. Mm-hmm. It's insane yeah. to me because like Manny Ramirez played for the Red Sox, right? Manny Ramirez grew up in Washington Heights. Mm-hmm. Went to high school here. Went to G Dub. Didn't speak a lick of English. He did like it's just insane that you could be in the and I love that. Yeah. Like yeah. you're just surrounded by culture. Yeah, it's like um, a beautiful hub. Yeah, it's you, just like you it can has know, everything. Yeah. You if you let's say one day you wake up and like you know what I want to go to Dominican Republic today. Just pop on the A train, go up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's say ah oh, man, I'm, I'm I'd love to check out what Jamaica's like. You know, all right, go to Brooklyn, go to go through Crown Heights. <laughs> you know, like you it's, it's you can go through and there's. I, I reject the notion that New York is a melting pot. It's not. What it is is several, many different melting pots. Mm-hmm. All like they're in. There's several like they're not. Touching. They're in their own pockets. Exactly. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, there is there. It's not a blend I, of multiple things. Yeah. Right. Jackson Heights and Queens might be the closest you get to a melting pot because, but even then, because there's like sections where it's all Indian. And the mm. section was all Salvadorian. Mm. The section was like all like Tibetan. And like I had Tibetan food for the first time this year. I don't think I've ever had Tibetan food. It's you know, it's not dissimilar to a lot of other Asian cultures, but like it's just one or two things might separate mm. from other, like I Do you think the subtleties are in the spices? I think so. It's like like all right, I use turmeric when I cook, but I don't mm-hmm. use as much turmeric as like like say an Indian dish would have. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I use paprika, but like, you know, there are Russians that use paprika differently than I do, or mm-hmm. use way more. Like, right. um, I had uh, paprikash for the first time, not too long ago, and it's basically just a Russian dish with a ton of paprika in it. It's all it is. And like, wow. Like, but me, you know, I grew up with eating food with paprika in it, but it's like that the subtlety of like how much you use or mm-hmm. you know what you use differently you know what i mean so it's mm-hmm. like things like that that i love um also the resources were different yeah right so like how they would make yeah. things yeah because they were didn't have the same like access to also because the seasons depending on where they're located right. you don't right. get the certain climate or things that can grow you don't get the same things have you guys ever had filipino food yeah no I've not. Uh, filipino food is really good it's like if you were, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, so, it's, I hate to be reductive, but it's basically if you combine Spanish food and like, and uh, Chinese food, mm. there's like both influences there. And funny enough, uh, Jollibee, it, I highly recommend it. It, it. It's the best fried chicken I've ever had. Whoa, okay. It's like, it's, it's Philip, it's like a Filipino McDonald's. And I forever needed to find one. I couldn't find one. There was only, growing up in New York, there was there was none in New York. Yeah. The closest one, ironically, was in was in Rutherford. No way. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's not, it's not around anymore. I don't know. Right? Yeah. I don't know. But like when I whenever I, I would Google it, I'm like, I gotta find a jolly The closest one is Rutherford. I'm like, well I guess I'm not going to Jolly <laughs> <laughs> And then they opened one up and uh, there was uh, the, the only other Jolly Bee was in Queens in Jackson Heights. Uh, right on I was on Roosevelt Avenue on like 60, I want to say 63rd Street. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, the menu doesn't make any sense. It doesn't at all. Like in what sense? Like there's, their main thing is fried chicken. Uh-huh. They only sell legs and thighs. And um, they they have, the, they serve everything you order, like mm-hmm. you order a combo, it's like comes with a little, a little thing of rice. Okay. Uh, if you want to get adobo rice, you can get that too. They have jolly spaghetti. Jolly spaghetti is like exactly what you would expect. Except it's cut up hot dogs, and the sauce has is sweet. I think they put pineapple in it. Okay. And uh, there's like little chunks of like beef in it, but there's like cut up hot dogs, and then they top it with cheese. And then they have like burger steak, and like they have chicken sandwiches, and they have like like weird like uh, they have like weird desserts, and not weird. I shouldn't say weird, but like it's. It's so many different things. Like mm-hmm. the burger steak looks like the Salisbury the Salisbury steak they used to give you when you were in school mm-hmm. with like the mystery sauce. With the gravy, yeah, right. Yeah. The sauce, yeah. Uh, I haven't been adventurous yet to try it, but I'm, I think I'm getting there. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's one in Jackson Heights, and 
There's one now near Port Authority. So ah, you shit. Ever, if you guys ever uh, come into New York, and you know, I know the 190, I just got on it. Uh, yep. It was literally that. right by Port Authority on like 40, maybe 41st and 8th Avenue, like maybe two blocks off of, off, away from Times Square, which, you know, that's that's the one thing about New York I hate, I will say. Mm. I hate Times Square with a passion. Mm. <laughs> like, it's just. <clears throat> Is there a New Yorker that actually likes it? I don't think like so. Like a native tree, right? Yorker, There's nobody, right? It's just for tourists. If you it's hear a tourist anyone that tells you that they like Times Square, um, they have just robbed you. They, something, <laughs> something is wrong and you need to call the police like, as soon as possible. Yeah. It's just, it's the butthole of New York. I hate it. It's what, like, there's just too many people. They're, most of them are tourists. They don't know the rules. They, you know, walk on the right side. Don't crowd the street. Right. Like, there's, I wanna, Those are rules you learn when you're a kid though, right? In not school, everyone. you knew you walk on your right. You're on your right. Tourists are the worst. Tourists are the worst. I think they know, and I think they know, and they're just fucking with us. Well, you know, it's part of the joy. The they're experience. happy. They're on vacation. Like Everybody it. else is living. Life. It's true. It's true. Everybody else is miserable. I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna run for mayor. I'm gonna run for mayor. That's my platform. Yeah. And tourists. This. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna make the city. I'm, we're gonna. We're gonna. It's gonna create jobs because we're gonna create uh, lanes on the sidewalk. Mm. You have the express lane for people that know mm. where they're going. You have the tourist lane, and you have the, like, all right, maybe you're not in a rush lane. You're doing that, and you're creating more jobs because you're putting in Quick Check and Wawa. Exactly. Yeah. See, I have got, I've got a plan, and I'm, look, I, in my lifetime, let me see, I'm 37, I've lived through Koch, Dinkins, Giuliani, Bloomberg, de Bla- five mayors. Yes. De Blasio is by far the worst mayor of my lifetime. Really? I don't remember Koch. I don't. Yeah. By the time Lukash left office, I was like four. But sign me up. I think he's dead now, but okay, if we could bring, dig up his carcass and have him <laughs> just much sit in the chair. Mayor, much better mayor than de Blasio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you hear your people. Vote for Stan if I'm you gonna can. I'm gonna, I mean, I've said too much. What's your slogan? What would be your slogan? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, it would be... Uh, I'm trying to think of something real vulgar. Like, <laughs> New York, uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Honestly, take it and like it. I, you know what? I, I, think, like, I think that actually, for New York, that works. Because yeah. cause that, that was one of the reasons why Andrew Yang didn't do well in the races. Uh, people were like, you're, they like, they, they, he's they said something. Yeah. He was like, there was a, oh, he, it was real bad. There was one time he took a picture on the A train. He was like, going up to the Bronx. I was like, the A-Train doesn't go to the Bronx. Right? <laughs> he, like, I was like, don't like, don't try so hard. It's yeah. not, it's, yeah. it's every, like the best mayors are the ones that don't try that hard. Like, Koch was like from here, there's a rumor that he was gay. I don't believe it, but who cares if either way, I don't care. But like, you know, um, Koch was, 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 was chill. He was cool. Dinkins didn't get a fair shake because he was black. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Giuliani, Giuliani came in with so much cachet because he broke up the mob as 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 attorney general. So yeah. he was like, "Oh, this this is the man." I mean, he was a terrible mayor. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, depending on your perspective, if you're white, you love Giuliani. <laughs> if you're you a Yankee like, fan, you yeah, love Giuliani. Yeah, you look like me, not so much. No, uh, really I've been like I've been stopped and frisked many a time. Um, no. But like De Blasio came in first of all. Uh, Red Sox fan. I'm not even a Yankee fan. I'm a Mets fan. I have a logo on, on, tattooed on my chest to prove it. <laughs> but you don't come into the city rooting for, rooting for Boston. Right. That's one. Secondly, like after he, what? Yeah, like what? Like I'm won, Yankees and you're yeah. like a, I'm dating a Mets person, but it's just like as long as you're not Red Sox. Right. Yeah. Like, that, that's, that's disrespectful. Just, that's it honestly is disrespectful. 100%. It is disrespectful. Yeah. After he got elected, there was like a he, he had a he went to some pizza place. It was like one of those like chain place, not, not chain, but like it was like one of those places that tourists go to. He was eating pizza with a knife and fork, and I was like, "How did we let this?" What? Uh, uh, I don't get it. Uh, I don't understand. It's pure. It's literally made so it's hard for you to eat it with a fork. Especially and a knife. The, the, the bullshit plastic knife and fork, and I'm like, "That's gonna take you hours to eat this." Like, you look so uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable watching <laughs> this happen right you now. You might as well eat the plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. eat the paper and the plate. Like what the? Like what do you do? It's a fun. It's a you fun fold. finger. Fold. You fold. Well, fold and people, you know, people are being a little, uh, being a little crazy and pushing it, and they make, they're making their, they roll their pizza slices and as a burrito That's and bullshit. they eat it. You did you know that was a thing? That's. Oh. <laughs> this is upsetting. Get a if okay. Get a calzone. Uh, yeah. If you're yeah. gonna do that, get a calzone or yes. get a pepperoni roll. Yeah. 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 
and yeah, and the thing is like, like all, like all the pizza is good. However, the best parts are the parts on top. Like, yeah, you know, it's like so. Why are you rolling that and keeping that in, and then you're just eating the straight back of the? Right. You're eating the ass of the pizza. You know, there's a place. Another thing, I'm just gonna sprinkle in here. There is a pizza shop that does upside down pizza. So where they bake it and where the crust is and everything, like where the actual bottom is, that's mm. where they put all the toppings. Is it good? On, on Never the, tried it. On the bottom crust? Yes. So they make it first and then take it out and then put, then put the toppings? I would, I'd be curious. This is a good that. question. Yeah. I don't know the process, but that yeah. would have to happen because if it's upside down, one of them has to clearly be the harder crust. It has to right. be the bottom crust. Interesting. Yeah. I, but like, what the fuck do we need to flip it upside down for? I know people who do that, pizza but... sandwiches where they'll take two slices and put what? them together and then eat that. Yeah, I, I, I was skeptical at first, but I will say it, it's, double, it's double, the double stuff double Oreo double of yeah. pizza. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've never tried that. That's interesting. I, I would I would I've definitely done that, but not because I like it was like ah I'm just I'm hungry and I'm drunk. Yeah. Like yeah. I did that. <laughs> I do like so I don't have a lot of pizza opinions. I think you know I, I, I this is divisive, but I do enjoy pineapple on pizza. I I, think, same same. It's, I think it's. Fine. I was recently swayed. Yeah, it's good. What's well, right? It's right. I was yeah. against it. Like I I think. No, I'm not. I, there's not too many things I won't eat on a pizza. I once went to a place on Saturday Wait, so you'll have morning. anchovies? No, I wouldn't do that. That's different. That's, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's different. Saying that's kidding. Not, I don't understand how that's a thing. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I, I might draw the line. I don't know. But, but I did go to a place. Uh, and I don't know. I think more pizza places should do this. I went to a place that uh, at the end of the night, it was like, I didn't even know they did it, but I, I walked in and they had um, left whatever leftover pasta that they didn't sell. They put it on the pizza, mm. sprinkle some mozzarella on it, yeah, put it in the oven. Yeah, um, yeah. Guys, you haven't lived until you've had spaghetti on pizza. Yes, pasta pizza. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I know that, you know, there's like plenty of vodka slices and like that, but like... I have spaghetti. spaghetti? Mm. What? Mm. Hold the phone. The worst oh. thing I've ever heard. I will never do this. The worst thing I've ever heard. Uh, I don't know if you guys are football fans at all, but uh, Mel Kiper Jr. is a drop down at ESPN. And he's from Baltimore. And I now, at this point, I'm afraid to go to the city because this is the work of a serial killer. What he does <laughs> oh, is my he eats his pizza. He takes all the cheese off. No. Why? Uh, Why? Puts on mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Mel Kiper Jr. is a serial killer. Wait, Where do potatoes come from? Is he... <laughs> He's got mashed potatoes on I hand. I can literally see that as a scene in Psycho. Like, that kid. On hand. Like, yeah. He just has it. I can see some. First off, eating mashed potatoes without gravy is a hate crime in itself. Yes. But second, like, you just, he replaces the cheese from his but pizza. But where did he get the food? No idea. No idea. Here's another thing about Mel Kiper Jr. Every day has a slice of uh, sweet potato pie. What's a pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie. Every day. Every Not a fan day, of pumpkin pie. This, neither am I. Could you He's imagine? something with the peas with him. Potatoes, pumpkin, something, something with that. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I like he psycho. Honestly, <laughs> when I heard that a couple years ago, and I was like, "This can't be true." And I looked it up, and I was like, "It's it legit. real." Wow. He does the and like he does the draft like ESPN and he's proud side. of that. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, he yeah, sounds yeah. like he's, he's trolling people publicly. with his food choices. Yeah, he's, there's no, yeah. No, I, yeah. I believe it's he's true. He's creating an uproar. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, same your, same question. I'm like, wh where are you getting mashed potatoes? Are you making mashed potatoes like all the exactly. time? Exactly. He has to buy a slice if he's buying it outside. Like, bring it home bring unless it home. he's making it. Then, you, unless you have a tub of mash with you, on you, at all times. <laughs> like, what happens? This is my, I have so many questions for you. What happens <laughs> when you go out and you just, all right, I'm gonna get pizza. What do you do? Are you like, you looking for Popeyes to get like? That's pizzas? when he bring. That's when he brings his, he brings his potatoes to go. That's when he brings. Right, his, right. He's prepared. Yeah. yeah. Either that or every pizza every, pizza every pizza serial pizza. killer is methodical. You know, yeah, they, they play this out. Yeah, yeah, yes, right. <laughs> if, I ever, if I ever meet him, I'm gonna be like, you, you need a therapy, friend. <laughs> like that's not something people should do. Like every like in, he talked like, in this regardless of the pizza every day. Pumpkin pie? Ooh, the pie is weird. Yeah, the pie. Because again, like, I do think pumpkin Why? pie. Why? People eat ice cream every day. Some people do for every day for dessert. Yeah. And like, listen, everyone has their own things they like. I do feel like pumpkin pie, again, is it's an event food. Right. It's a thing you're doing. At, like. So wait, he, so he, and, and doesn't matter what the season. Doesn't matter. Every day. Wow. If he's awake, he is eating <laughs> pumpkin pie. <laughs> the sun rises. November <laughs> Jr. 
is eating pumpkin pie. All right. Well, th- this is fantastic. Yes. Um, Stan, <laughs> do you want to uh, add any more um, oh, yeah. venues I mean, on your list? Ice House in LA. You've got the Comedy Store. You've got, um, you know, uh, uh, the you got the Village Underground. I should point out in New York. Uh, you've got um, I said the Comedy Store. Mm-hmm. What's the other one in LA? The Laugh Factory. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got all the Magoobies, you've got the the um uh Rooster Tea Feathers. Uh, uh where did I put I did the Philly Improv Theater in, in Philly. It was across from Helium, that's another one. Helium's great. Uh, uh you've got Dangerfields, which RIP they moved upstate, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um I saw uh, Wait, where upstate did they move it? I don't know. I think they moved to the Catskills. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because like, the Catskills has a history of having, like, they used to have like yeah. a bunch of like comedy clubs and a lot yeah. of like big, like Milton Burl used to go up there all yeah, the time. Yeah. I think Jerry Lewis used to go up there and all the time. Dangerfields does have Catskill comedy like roots. Oh, okay. just a lot like they, like Rodney was a, was a Catskill guy for a long time. Oh, day. cool. So, um, like I, the history of it is great. Um, trust me, there's I've, I've done comedy at the Delancey. There's Old Man Hustle. Uh, there's um, now I'm thinking about lounges in the city. There's um, I mean, the past year and a half, what isn't a comedy venue at this point? True. True. People's houses technically People's are houses, a. Hey, we're not counting that. Parks. We're not counting that <laughs> actual legit no. venue. Yes. With uh, with liquor licenses. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You must serve booze. You must yeah. require two at a minimum yeah, in yeah, order to be a comedy <laughs> club. Um, um, there's uh, the Inkwell in Brooklyn. There's uh, the the Looney Bin in Staten Island. I don't know. I don't know if they're open anymore. Um, there's a bunch of bars. I've done like Muppet Pugs in Staten Island. I've done um, Little Victory Theater. Um, they just had a great festival in Staten Island a few weeks ago. Um, actually, I there was I did comedy in the woods. Does the woods uh, count? Can I say the woods? Well, I don't think so because it was just like a random amphitheater in the woods in Staten Island. So was I, it how no, was it? not counted. It was strange. Yeah. I was the only black guy on the lineup, and I was like, "I'm gonna die here." Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh my gosh! Because I, like, I, I was like, "I don't." That was a meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, "Where's where's the burning cross?" <laughs> no, it was a bunch of guys that I know, so I trusted them. But it was still kind of weird to walk up mm. uh, into the woods to do stand up. Um, How is your? Can you um, speak a little about your? Is it speak or talk? Damn it's both. Can Just, you? Sorry, high can you recite tangent. words. What? <laughs> what is? Can you uh, talk a little about your experience in stand up being not a white man? Um, being that's black, interesting being because uh, I feel like because especially at my age, like like coming up. I was nerdy. I, you know, I'm still nerdy. Uh, I, I actually, um, you know, I'm, I'm into pop culture and like all these, all, a lot of weird things. Yeah, I mean, you gave us um, a whole list of bread. Yeah, yeah. 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 Also, <laughs> you have baby Yoda slash growth yeah, on your yeah, chest as, right. we're, as yeah. we're speaking. I also have a Han shot first t shirt. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm very Star Wars heavy. Yes. We're going to have to save it for another <laughs> Star Wars yeah. to go down that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I like Star Trek. I like, you know, I'm, I like growing up, like I was. So I grew up sort of an outsider, um, but then as I got, my interest started growing, I got into hip hop and I got into, so like, it, it, it's, it's. I saw a play last night called Thoughts of a Colored Man and I highly recommend it for anybody who is into Ooh, Broadway. Yes, I saw you post that. Oh, I'm so good. It, yeah. like, I, it, it, the cast is amazing. Um, it, I think it opens uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Cool. Um, like to the public, like my girlfriend works on Broadway, so we were able to get get uh, free tickets and nice. early. Um, but I was blown away, and there was a character who I resonated with a hundred percent because he. Well, the only difference is like he grew up with both of his parents. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't. I grew up with mostly my mom. My dad. We, I lived with my dad till I was eleven. He moved out, and but I still keep in contact with my dad. So, um, you know, growing up. Uh, I wasn't black enough for my black friends and I was like too black for my white friends. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I was that weird, like sort of both sides kind of thing. Like yeah. I've always kind of felt like a fraud in a way. Mm-hmm. Where like, okay, um, like I, I love sports, but I had to, 
I, I, I would like when I, before I turned like nine, which was ridiculous to say, like I, you know, I was aware, but I wasn't like crazy into it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm going to have to learn. Like I played football, but I didn't learn. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't understand certain things. I knew stats and stuff like that, but like. That was just because I I wanted to fit in with people that were talking about basketball and football. And then mm -hmm. as I got older, I was like, okay, I'm applying the stats that I know to things, and I can analyze certain things. I can tell you what's coming, and I can do this sort of thing. But like, those are the things, those are the extra steps I had to go through mm -hmm. to kind of fit in. And as I got older, like you know, stand up became a thing, and I, and um, I think with stand up being not just black, but being queer, because I'm by um, in in uh in stand up is like it took me a long time too to kind of like um to talk about certain things mm -hmm. because like there's certain spots and certain clubs certain venues uh, especially in Harlem like I would do like you know uh mocha and I would do you know uh, <clears throat> a, lot, like, a lot of these other spots and there's a joke that I I'm not going to tell that joke but I could go mm -hmm. down to like the East Village somewhere and like that eh, like I could talk yeah. about whatever I wanted. Yeah. yeah. I could jump into these like LGBTQ friendly spots and like right. I mean, now I'm, I feel like I'm more well rounded as a comic and I don't care what people think about me. Yeah. Like early on in your career they're like, All right, well, you know, I I wanna get booked so maybe I should, you know, be careful what I talk about. Now at the, at this point I'm like, I I'm gonna I'm gonna get in where I fit in. Yeah. And that's why I love about stand up too, because like, you know, the pandemic kind of pushed us all together, but there's a lot of LGBTQ friendly comics that I knew that I that I got to meet venues that I didn't know about and um yeah that uniqueness people. like yeah. your uniqueness is your power and you could do stand up in New York like for a long time and yeah. just like yeah. I was just one place and these people were in another yeah mm -hmm. and I'm glad we got to we kind of got to meet so that's great um as a, as a stand-up like um I don't I don't think I found it very difficult to navigate um you know the space uh, being black or being queer or whatever because uh, it's just it is like funny is funny at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I, I with the way the 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 climate is, the culture is, with everything so divisive, vax not vax, you know, conservative, liberal, whatever. You, like people, everybody's living in an echo chamber. Twitter's like terrible place, and like all these things are just like is that everybody's fighting? It's, I I value comedy so much because I'm around people that. It doesn't give a shit. Nobody cares yeah. if what you are. You could be, you know, male, female, they, them, however, black, white. It doesn't matter if you're funny, and you're you're a good person. I think it all it all works out that way because um, all it is is like I I like ha I like having conversations. I like having I like I'm I'm never closed off to a conversation. I'm like mm -hmm. I'm never the type to be like, well, this is I. The only the hard stances I have is avocado. <laughs> those are the only things that's a hard, I have a hard line on it you will not convince me otherwise I know people try to say well, avocado is one thing but what about guacamole guacamole is even worse <gasps> oh wow yes because you're just taking the thing I like and adding things that I do like to trick me and I don't like that uh, yes okay uh, it's just it's just fancy throw up is what it is uh, <laughs> I, I can't stand it but no, like those, are, I don't have any hard senses or anything. Like I could talk to a person who's conservative. I'm like, all right, well, let me see your perspective. Yeah. Like I'm willing to listen to your perspective. Right? And like, I feel like that's also a liberal thing. Liberals are always the ones that are willing to be like, all right, you know, uh, I'll, I'll hear you out. Yeah. 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 Conservative, yeah. like, nah, fuck you. This yeah. Is what, and like, they end up winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, uh, we need, like that's the thing about liberals. We 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 we'll, we'd win more if we were just like, nah, fuck you. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's how I feel. <laughs> like I I was um, <laughs> I I saw somebody, I uh post something uh Trump was talking about how all the Haitians that are coming into the country from into through Texas or whatever they're like they all have AIDS. And I was like, okay, all right, this is where, this is where I draw. And I have a lot of friends that are conservative, the Trump supporters. That's fine. We've been friends for a long time. I don't, I don't care who you vote for. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, both Trump and Biden are in some boardroom laughing at all of us. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I don't really give a shit. However, however, I do draw the line at like let's 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 stop let's stop saying people from my country have AIDS. All right, can we mm -hmm. stop? Can we can we put this clown like vote for who you vote for? 
except for that except for this guy yes because that's yeah. that to, to yeah. me if you're if at this point if you're still a trump supporter you're actively choosing to hate certain people yeah that's it you heard your people we draw the line at aids and avocado yeah that's, yeah, it. that's, that's right it. that's <laughs> it yeah. mel kuiper hat he likes the peas i hate the aids <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. No, yeah, thanks for having me. This yeah. is great, man. Yeah. Uh, and you, like, you plugged some of your shows already, but do you, uh, do you have any social uh, media handles yeah, or anything? Um, like, you want I'm to funny man staying everywhere. Twitter, Instagram. Um, I think I might start a Substack soon and just write stuff because I do have ideas. Uh, I, I'm just trying to figure out how to create more content, man. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I'm lazy, but like, I do have fun ideas. And, but I'm like, I'm really bad with like TikTok. I tried. TikTok, I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, if you ever want to collaborate. Yeah? We're here, yeah. I'm thinking, like, I want to do, like, something unique to me. But, like, something, like, a stat of the day. Or, like... Ooh, ooh, interesting. Just, like, the random... Or, like, I don't know. Something. I just I just want to... Pro- I want to I wanna start getting a lot of TikTok followers. But I feel like that's the way to do it. <laughs> that is what they say. Yeah. yeah. It's the yeah. new social media platform on the rise. For I mean, now. it's been on the rise. Yeah. What am I saying? <laughs> Thanks, like it's so integrated yeah. in culture now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank Friendly, you. Guys. Any last thoughts? Uh, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, so you can check us out uh, at the Players Theater on November twelfth. We're doing a interdimensional interdimensional improv show <laughs> that night. We we will go through time, space, and different realities for some improv comedy. So come on through at nine thirty. We're gonna be in the West Village early, hanging out. So come through. Rena, any last words or thoughts? No, just. Uh, stay hydrated. Yeah, stay hydrated.